What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I've been using iOS 13.1 beta 3 for about a week now. So I wanted to talk to you guys about my experience with it and also how it compares to iOS 13 GM in terms of stability. So of course in this video, we're gonna cover any new changes found in the software since my original What's New video. We're gonna discuss the battery life, the performance, bugs, bug fixes, and more. So before we get into the battery life and the performance on iOS 13.1 beta 3, and if you should be on iOS 13.1 or iOS 13 GM, let's Let's talk about some more new changes and features found in iOS 13.1. Now, the first change I actually just noticed today, and this isn't necessarily just in iOS 13.1, it's going to be across all of iOS 13, but applications and developers are now updating their applications to have a dark mode enabled in them. And that's actually when you toggle it on system wide. So for example, in this application, Music Match, if we go ahead and toggle on dark mode system wide, you can see we get a dark mode in this third party application, whereas that did not happen before. And that's nice to have because you don't have to use like a toggle like you see here in Twitter. You don't have to toggle on a dark or a light mode. It actually just does it based on your system wide setting, whether it's dark mode or light mode. So if we go back to that application, Music Match right here, and we go back to light mode, you can see it changes the third party application here back to a light mode as well. So that's pretty cool. Again, that doesn't have to do with 13.1 necessarily. It's just that it's starting to roll out now. A lot of developers are updating their applications just because iOS 13 comes out on the 19th. Now, something that does have to do with iOS 13.1 beta three is that I noticed a lot more mentioning of the optimized battery charging feature throughout iOS. Now, I never got this before. I would just get random alerts for this feature. If you don't know what this is, if we go into our battery, battery health, optimized battery charging right there. That is the new feature in iOS 13. But in iOS 13.1 beta 3, I've noticed a lot more mentioning of it throughout iOS. I would get, you know, random Siri suggestions on my lock screen. I would get it when I'm charging my phone. It would give me like a prediction for when I should have this. Uh, if I have it enabled, it would tell me like when I will reach the certain battery percentage. I've just been seeing a lot more mentioning of this feature via Siri suggestions. Now, Apple Arcade is also just now rolling out. It just released today to the public. So it is rolling out worldwide right now. You can see all you can play free for one month Apple Arcade. You can actually now sign up and start downloading games if you want to. I will be doing a review on this because I think it is kind of interesting uh, how we get a lot of exclusive games and things like that as well. So I'm actually looking forward to trying this out. If you guys do have Apple Arcade downloaded, if you've played some of the games, let me know how you like it down in the comment section below. I am very curious because at first I was really turned off by this, but then when I saw the you know demonstration on stage, I actually was really intrigued by it, especially at just five bucks a month. It's really not a bad price at all. Now, another awesome feature that's not currently available in iOS 13, but will possibly be out once the final version releases on September 19th is multi-camera recording. So this is where you can actually record from the front and the rear facing camera at the same time using third party applications like Filmic Pro. So this is a feature that we saw demonstrated with the iPhone 11 at the Apple event where they introduced the new iPhone 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. And we all just pretty much assumed that this was just an exclusive feature for the brand new iPhone 11s, but it's actually a software based feature and it works on the iPhone 10s, 10s Max, 10R and the 2018 iPad Pro as well. So it's not just exclusive to the new iPhones. Now, unfortunately it's not going to be be included in the default camera application. It's actually just going to be uh, like in applications, third party applications like Filmic Pro and any other applications that utilize the new API to make this possible. And I will leave a link down below with more details about this feature if you are interested in reading more about it and you know learning more about how it works and everything. So that is a really cool feature and I will be showing you guys a video demo of that on not only the new iPhones, but also the old iPhones as well in a future video. Now, one thing that a lot of people with iOS 13.1 beta three have been reporting is that their signal and their speeds have improved for both LTE and Wi-Fi. Now that's probably due to the modem firmware update that we got going from beta two to beta three. But unfortunately, this has not been the case for me. My speeds have not increased any. My signal has not increased any. My upload and my download speeds through Wi-Fi are the exact same as they have been since iOS 13.1 beta one. No improvement. I mean, it's not bad. Sometimes my Wi-Fi speeds will be slow and kind of inconsistent but unfortunately my speeds have not improved at all. So let me know down in a comment below if any of your speeds, your LTE or Wi-Fi have improved, if you've noticed better signal or anything like that. That has not been the case for me, but I know a lot of people were reporting that. I do also know that a lot of people had LTE issues where they would not be able to connect and same with Wi-Fi where they would disconnect from Wi-Fi and then not be able to connect back. 
I also never faced any of those issues, but I know that it was pretty popular uh, from people on forums, people that you know messaged me on social media and things like that. Now, as far as bugs go in iOS 13.1 beta 3, there's still an issue with the podcast application. I won't be able to pause it sometimes. Like if I go out of the podcast application, go back in, I will not be able to pause. It's also the same if I go from the control center and try to pause, it won't pause. I'll have to sit there and keep clicking on it, keep clicking, and it'll just freeze up and it won't pause. So I'm not sure what's up with that. I had that in every single version of iOS 13.1 so far. It's really annoying and it takes about 20 to 30 seconds before it unfreezes and actually allows me to press a button like pause or fast forward or anything. So I really hope Apple fixes the podcast application. It could just be because I have a ton of podcasts and a lot of stuff going on, but still that should not be happening on a 256 gigabyte iPhone XS Max. And speaking of bugs, CarPlay is also still buggy for me on iOS 13.1 beta 3. This has really been the case since iOS 13 was introduced. They still haven't narrowed down all the bugs with CarPlay. Sometimes Waze will crash. It'll just show a blank screen. Sometimes, you know, when I plug my phone in, it won't detect that CarPlay is actually available. And then sometimes CarPlay will just crash and restart itself. So hopefully CarPlay does get fixed with the final version of 13.1, but it's not really anything major. It's nothing that really drives me crazy. It only happens every once in a while. Uh, but I did just want to mention it. Now, another thing that's really annoying to me is adding songs to playlists and just how slow the animation is. You guys know in Apple Music, when you go here and go to add a song to a playlist, and then you add it to a playlist, you can see there's a long delay, then it finally says add it to playlist. Now, the speed of this has improved. It used to be a lot slower with iOS 13, but it's still pretty slow, especially when you have like a new song or an album, just adding it to that playlist is really slow. The animation's slow. Sometimes it actually won't add it to the playlist, and then you have to add another song, and then both songs show up in the playlist. So the music application still has some bugs to work out, but it's really nothing major. Now, speaking of music, one thing that has not worked for me that has not shown up for me is audio sharing. So for some people, even in iOS 13, the GM version, audio sharing shows up for them. This is where you can basically split your audio between two sets of AirPods or, you know, power beats or something like that, where you can hear the same song through two sets of headphones. For some reason that never shows up for me, even when I have my AirPods connected, I have them on, I never get the UI for audio sharing. And then the last issue I wanted to mention is that sometimes when I open up the app store, it will just be white. It'll just be a blank white screen and nothing will show up. I don't know why it's just the app store, but it's only the app store and I will have to close out of the application and reopen it for it to work properly. Now, aside from those bugs, iOS 13.1 beta three has been really, really good in terms of performance. I've had no random resprings, no stuttering anywhere else aside from like the podcast application. That's really the only application that's given me issues. And that's also the case with iOS 13 the GM build of iOS 13. It's the exact same in terms of stability. If you were using iOS 13 and 13.1 beta three side by side, you would not be able to tell the difference. They're both super stable. And that's a big reason why I prefer 13.1 over 13, uh, but I will talk about that at the end of this video. But yeah, the performance on iOS 13.1 beta three, aside from the podcast application is very, very good. Now in terms of battery life, battery life is also really good here on iOS 13.1 beta three. If you go ahead and look at my stats right here, you can see I do go a long while without charging my phone. Um, most of the time, I mean, I'm basically getting all day battery life on iOS 13.1 beta three here. And my usage has been very all over the place as well. So I've got a lot of different like use cases every single day. I'm doing something different every day with my phone and you can see it's doing really well in terms of battery life. Again, I will have, you know, hundred percent in the morning and it'll last me till, you know, at least like eight or 9 PM at night with like 20% remaining. So I know most of the time these charts don't really show you much, uh, but the battery life is good here on 13.1 beta three. It's about the same as 13.0, the GM build. So now back to what I was saying earlier, I do prefer iOS 13.1 beta three over the GM build of iOS 13. I would tell you guys that if you're on iOS 13.1, the beta do not downgrade to iOS 13, the final release, because you're pretty much not going to really gain anything. I mean, you're going to lose features and have the same performance and battery life. So there's really no reason to go from 13.1 13.1 back down to 13.0. So all in all, iOS 13.1 beta three and iOS 13.1, the final version is about the same in terms of stability as iOS 13.0, the GM build in terms of performance, battery life, it's pretty much the exact same. There's hardly any difference, but with iOS 13.1, you do get some additional new features. For example, the automations tab down here in Siri shortcuts, you actually don't have that in iOS 13.0. Even when the final version gets released, you won't have the automations tab down there, but you do have that in 13.1. There's also a lot of small UI enhancements throughout the OS in iOS 13.1. You have the three finger tap, how it doesn't work on the home screen. 
Uh, that was like a bug in iOS 13.0 that really affected gaming as well. You don't have that in 13.1 that has been fixed. And again, a lot of people had improved LTE and Wi-Fi speeds and also their connection, like their signal has improved as well. Again, that wasn't the case for me, but some people did report that. So yeah, stay on iOS 13.1 beta, even when iOS 13 comes out on Thursday the 19th. And also iOS 13.1 will be released just a couple weeks later on September 30th. So yeah, guys, that's my follow-up review on iOS 13.1 beta 3. I'm loving it so far. I am using it on my daily driver here, the iPhone 10s Max. I have also been using it on my iPad and my iPhone 6s. I have my iPhone 10R on the GM build of iOS 13 now. And that has just been my overall experience with 13.1 and iOS 13 GM. Let me know down in a comment below how both of these versions have been treating you. Which one do you prefer? Which one are you going to stay on? Let me know your experience down in the comments section below. And if you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and of course subscribe so you don't miss any of my future iOS 13 videos.